50 days later, on the first Pentecost, there was in the upper room the apostles surrounding the Blessed Virgin Mary. And on this day, the third person of the Blessed Trinity was sent by the Father and the Son because uh, on Ascension Thursday, our Lord had ascended physically into heaven. And so the Father and the Son sent the third person. And that was the Holy Ghost under the appearance of, of the tongues of fire, which descended on the Blessed Virgin Mary and then spread to the apostles. And their hearts were inflamed with the gifts of the Holy Ghost. And the apostles who were before like little mice running scared from the Jews, on this very day they were inflamed with the fearlessness of the truth of the faith. And they went out to preach the Holy Catholic faith. And when they spoke at, in Jerusalem at the time, there were all different races coming through, all different languages. And when they began to preach openly in the streets, everyone understood what they were saying. Even though those, they spoke one language, everyone understood. And that's what's called the gift of tongues. Not the foolish gift of tongues that the Charismatics proclaim as gifts of the Holy Ghost. They are not. Babbling and stupidity and barking like dogs and falling and passing out as happens in these Charismatic meetings, that is not the work of the Holy Ghost at all. In fact, it is, it is known that it's these, many of these Charismatic meetings are demonic possession. And the babbling is actually full of blasphemies against the Blessed Virgin Mary and the saints. So this charismatic nonsense is nothing to do with Catholicism. And yet Pope Benedict XVI praised the Charismatics and Pope John Paul II as being a further evolvement within the Catholic Church of the movement of the Holy so-called Spirit. But it's not the Holy, Holy Spirit. It's the unholy Spirit. So, when the Apostles had this gift, what's called the gift of tongues, that means they spoke, but they were understood by all the many languages. And so they were in awe, saying, how did we all understand him? But he's only speaking one language. And that was, these, what these are truly called, uh, St. Thomas Aquinas calls them the true charisms. These are extra miracles that the, the apostles or the saints can do, such as healing, raising from the dead, uh, speaking in tongues, in the true understanding of it, and uh, reading hearts like Padre Pio, or by, by location like Padre Pio and uh, several other saints could by locate. Um, also elevations off the ground in prayer. And many of these, what's called charisms of the Holy Ghost, are not ends in themselves. The reason why God gives them, says St. Thomas Aquinas, is the greater gift. The greater gift which is sanctifying grace in the soul. And this is what God wills, that He dwells in the soul all blessed Trinity, and that's why in the words of this Gospel of St. John 14, it's the last, it's at the Last Supper. It's our Lord, the Sacred Heart of Jesus, giving His last words to His Catholic bishops and the First Pope. And it's, it's, it's the great discourse of the Last Supper. And the Heart of Jesus opens, it's like His last testament before His death. And what He tells them is, among many things, is that we, we will come and make our abode, we will make our mansion in the soul. We will come, and this is the plural, to show the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are given to the soul in the state of grace. That's, that is the great miracle of baptism, that is the great miracle of what happens in confession. <coughs> And St. Thomas Aquinas says that the greatest work God can do, greater than the creation of the universe, is to 
put a soul from the state of sin to the state of grace. And that's something you don't see. But it is God's greatest work. And He does this with every baptism and frequently in confession. And uh, what the Holy, what our Lord means is when we come, we will make our bones in the soul. That is, your body really becomes a temple of the Blessed Trinity by the state of grace. And the sanctifying grace is one of the is one of the greatest treasures we have. And it's really, you could almost say, it's the purpose of the redemption. Because we cannot see God without sanctifying grace in heaven. We cannot get to heaven without sanctifying grace. We cannot merit for heaven with all our good works and prayers, sacrifices, just doing our duties of state every day out of love for God. We cannot merit without sanctifying grace. And sanctifying grace is synonymous with the love of God. As St. Paul will say, the charity of God is poured out in the souls. The Holy Ghost is poured out into our souls so that we might grow in charity. So to grow in sanctifying grace is almost synonymous with growing in charity, in the love of God. And we, we cannot have true love of God without sanctifying grace. And that's another modern error. Another modern lie. Love, love, love. But without saying divine grace, there's no, there's no true charity. And without the truth, as St. Paul says, uh, charity rejoices in the truth. Without the truth, there is no true charity. And that's why uh, for the leaders of the church to promote false ecumenism, joining all world religions, to pray together, as Pope Paul VI did, and John Paul II, and Pope Francis, of course, and Pope Benedict XVI, praying in a Muslim mosque facing Mecca, and refusing to make the sign of the cross, <coughs> and, and taking his shoes off out of respect for the, the temple given to Satan. These things do not call down God's blessings on the earth. They call down His anger. And God gets angry with many sins, but one sin provokes his anger, and that is sins against the faith, that attack the divinity of Christ and the, the truth of the one religion, the one religion Christ founded. And that's why, as Catholics, we've got to see, sanctifying grace is not just my personal thing, although it's very personal that the blessed Trinity lives in our soul, and we must grow in the love of Him and keep the state of grace. And if we fall from the state of grace by weakness, because there's so many temptations we know in this bad world, given to apostasy, uh, if one does fall from grace, make the act of contrition. Make an act of contrition. Go right back to the heart of Jesus. And were, was someone, would someone die before they could go to confession, the Council of Trent teaches they can still receive perfect contrition and save their soul. God can forgive them by perfect contrition. And the thing about grace is, is what we want to always live in. And that's why we need frequent confession. Even if we're not in mortal sin, it's good to go to confession to wipe off the dust of venial sin and the coldness towards God. But, saying by grace is not, again, just my personal thing. Because we live, we are born in families. And God made the family. He wants the family. And He wants the large family. As many as children God will give. Some God gives few, some God gives many, some God gives none. In which case it's good to adopt. But God is also the author of, a, of society. He is the author of civil society. And this is Catholic teaching, which has been completely forgotten and buried. In, and they want to get rid of this doctrine of the Catholic Church. Vatican II has attacked the social doctrine of the Catholic Church. It teaches a new doctrine 
that the human person is above the state, and the human person does, uh, has freedom to choose whatever he wants to believe. That's false. You and I, we don't have the right to believe what you and I want to believe. We don't have the right, we have the right to believe the true religion. And we don't have the right to believe in falsehood and error and heresy and infidelity. And the state that, that is the creation of God, God created the Catholic Church, but He also created the state because He made men to live in society with families. But obviously, when you have people living in a city or a nation, there has to rise some authority to guide. And the authority comes from God. All authority comes from God, including the political authority. And that means also, in our case, uh, we shake our heads in shame, <laughs> but Obama, his authority comes from God. And he will be judged. Well, there's all these rotten world leaders today, and in the church and state, when they come before Christ the King, they will be judged as presidents, as popes, as bishops, and priests. And they will have a more severe <coughs> judgment than the followers. And that's why when God punishes a people, and we see that always in Scripture, when God punishes a people, He sends them bad leaders. As Isaiah the prophet said, when God punishes the people, he, he lets them be governed by the effeminates, the Sodom and Gomorrahites. And that is a punishment from God. Because such sins cry to heaven for vengeance also, and will bring on a nation fire from heaven, as, have, as happened to Pompeii, Sodom and Gomorrah, and even in World War I and World War II, whole cities completely blown up, and much worse will happen in the next chastisement, as we all have been warned. So, the duty of the state, and the leaders of state, they have a duty to recognize the true God and the true religion. It's not an option. This idea that the state can be neutral on matters of religion is pure Freemasonry. And Freemasons have pushed for this for over a, since the French Revolution, 1789, in the name of the rights of man to overthrow the, the last Catholic governments from Catholic monarchies. And that's what World War I was about, to get rid of the last Catholic monarchies. And World War II was to spread this phony modern democracy throughout the world. And World War III will be the establishment of the Antichrist, his kingdom. And we're already almost there. The world is right for the Antichrist. We see that. But it's important for us, Catholic, to keep always in our mind the true social doctrine that the state must recognize the true religion. And we know after God chastises this world, and Our Lady of Fatima spoke about it, and Our Lady of Asalet, and Our Lady of Good Success, after the world is whacked for its sins, there will be a period of peace. The Pope will consecrate, a good Pope will consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And Russia will be the instrument to reestablish the social reign of Christ the King throughout the world. And you can already see that. The media is already, whether Putin is honest or not, I don't know. But we do see the rising up of a leader there's no one else doing it who is starting to take steps to abolish abortion in this country. That's what a leader must do. And it must be punishable by death, the sin of being a, a, an abortionist. It must be punishable by death. Just like a murderer is punishable still in our liberal West, the, the death penalty still exists in Texas and a couple other states. And it does prevent crime. But the greatest crime is heresy. And the greatest crime are those sins that cry to heaven for vengeance. So sodomites who publicly push their nonsense should also be publicly put to death. This is Catholic teaching. Why? St. Thomas puts it very simple. 
Why well, you're falling, you put out your hand to protect the more the more uh, valuable faculties, your eyesight, your head, your teeth, your hearing. So you put out your hand, you're willing to sacrifice your hand or get a broken or cut up hand than to get a cut up head. And the same in the state. The state will sacrifice its men and boys, and they can do that to protect the common good of the town or the city or the nation. This is Catholic teaching. Or self defense. A father may, he's got a thief coming in with a gun in his house. A father may shoot him to protect his family, and he, has, he, he commits no sin at all. It's a, in fact a duty. In fact, it would be a cowardly father not to take action. And so, the, the Catholic state, which should recognize the true religion, protect the, the true religion, and work with the church, like mother and father, as Pope Leo XIII said, to help the citizen get to heaven. That's the role of the state. And so when the apostles went out to preach the Catholic faith, they weren't preaching Jesus to be king just of our hearts. Jesus to be king just of our sacristies and our little chapels. They, our Lord told them, go preach to all nations. Nations. And so that is the Catholic doctrine. Nations must be Catholic. Nations must keep and uphold the laws of God. And we have a whole history of Catholicism to show the beauty of Catholicism. The beauty of the Catholic state. And the modern world spits on the, the, the Middle Ages, spits on the ages of the faith. But I'll tell you what, there was no suicides, almost unheard of in the ages of the faith. There was no messed up families. There was no messed up kids who were just lost and filling the jails and delinquent centers because they have no parents because of divorce. Divorce was forbidden. Divorce was never blessed by the state. It was forbidden by the state. Because the state protected the laws of God. And Christ's laws forbid divorce. Separation, maybe, in a, an impossible case. Alright, that's tolerated. It's a tolerated evil. But not divorce. Because Christ himself said, what God has put, has put together in marriage, no man, not even the state, not even Caesar, our president, so and so, can, can dissolve what God has put together. <coughs> so you had, in Catholic societies, healthy families. And even if a husband and wife didn't get along together, they knew that, well, we can't divorce, so we got to make the best of it. And so everything helped them to stay together, faithful to their vows. And of course, the sacraments and mass. And the churches, almost in Catholic cities, I'm sure there's churches almost on every block. Because people visited the Blessed Sacrament. They went to daily mass. They visited our Lord. There was a closeness with God who dwells with us in the Blessed Sacrament. So the heart of Jesus is the heart of the city. Physically, really, in the Blessed Sacrament. So you see, uh, what we know as Catholic Europe, and Catholic civilization, and Catholic South America, and what was once the works of the missionaries of the, of the, of the formerly great Jesuits in the Far East, and in Ukraine, becoming Catholic in the year 988. Uh, the, the king, St. Vladimir, he said, I want all my people to be baptized in this holy religion. And the whole country became Catholic. But we, we have to look, as Archbishop Lefebvre often spoke about, the fruits of the Holy Ghost in a Catholic society. The strong families, the many children, the economy prospers because there are many children. And demographers, and study, those who study demographics, say we are on the verge of a huge economic collapse, mostly because there's no more children. They're all aborted and contraceptives and killed. And if there was a huge influx of many, many, many children that could save the economy, they say, but 
the modern mind is so sick and twisted. People don't want children anymore. But in a healthy kind of society, there's many children, thousands of children. And since there's no abortion, there's also many orphans, many illegitimate children, because, you know, sins are sins. And, but there's orphanages. That's why there used to be the big cat of orphanages, run by the nuns and sisters, run by the brothers, who took care of children who were born out of wedlock. And that, that happened. That happened. And today you don't hear of orphanages, which should make us really cringe. That means there's no more children. And in a Catholic society, the good are really promoted and the bad are punished. And heresy is censored. The internet would be absolutely censored. And therefore safe for, for students to go on, like a huge library, to find information. And censorship of the TV, censorship of the public music. Plato even understood this, and Aristotle and Socrates. If you change the music, you smash the walls of the city, says Plato. If you affect the music, you affect the city. And if the public allows music that promotes uh, immorality, and uh, as you know, the fathers, the originators of rock and roll music, they themselves said, once we get this music in the youngsters, they're ours. And they're talking about all the modern music, rock and roll, hip hop, techno, it all fits that rock and roll genre. And we've got to raise our children to appreciate good music. Already, doctors do say that even the mother's womb, they hear Mozart playing, they hear the piano, they hear Gregorian chant in the house. They can hear it. It's already forming the child's emotions in the womb of the mother. And there are even doctors, uh, in France, uh, there's still a doctor alive, who recommends to autistic children two hours of listening to Mozart a day. And it, it cures them, it gets them out of it. Something about good music affects how they think. And even studies show uh, when boys have marching music, they do better in their studies. So, in a Catholic society, there would be the union of church and state, therefore, the laws of God would be upheld. And it would be normal to see the military, for example, uh, the military would be have a role of, of, a, of true justice. And it would be normal to see the leaders of society at mass and in processions. You can see pictures of Charles I of Austria walking in the, blessed, in the procession of the Blessed Sacrament with his white seat on and uh, adoring the Blessed Sacrament. The, the king of the nation, the president, we would say here. And that should be normal. We, we've completely lost this. And that's why our age is what's called by Pius X, 100 years ago, the apostate age, which will finish with the chastisement. This age will finish with the great chastisement. And then what survives on the other side will see the Catholic revival. As St. John Bosco also prophesied in our Lady of and our Lady of Fatima. There will be a period of peace. And the peace that she speaks of is not ceasefire. The peace our Lady of Fatima talks about is not, you know, everybody can now go back to choosing the religion of their choice and living immoral of their choice. That's not what she means. She means the peace of Christ the King, the social reign of Christ the King. That will happen. And what she said at last event, 25 years of good harvest, and men will forget God again. So, so, let's focus. What happens next week, what happens a year from now, in God's hands? As Padre Pio used to say, leave the future to God's providence. Leave the past to God's mercy. 
and, and focus on the present to God's love. And so what's important for us now, as Catholics, we must strive for the social reign of Christ the King. We must study our Catholic faith every day, all of us. And you men, try to read the works of Archbishop of Fed. They have uncrowned him especially. Read the encyclical on liberty, on human liberty by Pope Leo XIII. It's very thin, and it's not difficult, and it's very clear. You'll, you'll see, and just imagine if this thinking was coming from the White House, how things would change. <coughs> and uh, live in the state of grace. Love the state of grace. Converse with the Blessed Trinity who lives in your soul by grace. And value that above all else. Because by the state of grace you grow in the love of God. And everything you do becomes meritorious <coughs> and pleasing to God. And the degree of the, of the charity and sanctified grace with which we die will be the degree of glory in heaven, of the vision of the beautiful vision of, of the blessed Trinity. And it's the state of grace, St. Thomas, that enables us to see directly the blessed Trinity, called in heaven the Lumen Gloria, the light of glory. So already on earth, <coughs> God possesses us by sanctified grace, and we possess Him. And as St. Thomas also said, <coughs> the Holy Ghost is given for us to converse with God at a very friendly level, but also as our Creator and our God and our Lord. <coughs> but He's also given to us to enjoy Him, to enjoy His gift of the Blessed Trinity. So we must come to enjoy <coughs> the presence of the Blessed Trinity in our soul. Enjoy the company of God. Enjoy the speaking to pray with Him. <coughs> o Mary, conceive without sin. O Mary, conceive without sin. O Mary, conceive without sin. Pray. 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 Pray.